We sound familiar. Three, eight, eight. Good evening. Is everyone sitting comfortably? You might recognise this voice. Now, we present a special edition. This is being recorded for our podcast as well. We sound familiar. We now present Who Sounds Familiar? Now, has anyone been to LFCC lately? It was a first for many, and especially a first for Christopher Eccleston, as we will now betray. Okay, skip to the convention. Okay. 2,375. <laughs> Hello, uh, can I have an up, please? 2,470. <laughs> Righty-o, right, certainly. What's your name, mate? Uh, Tom. Cash or a card, Tom? I'm oh, sorry? We don't make it in this world doing something for now, mate. So you're paying by cash or card? Oh, uh, cash. Thank you. To Tom. Thanks to the door. You should have gone to a stage door instead. Chris. <laughs> there you go, mate. Fantastic. <laughs> can I get a photo of you? You got any five quid on you, mate? Um, I can ask my mum. Well, how about you top it off, get your mum, and then join the end of that long queue, all right? Good lad, off you pop. Who's next? Hello, Chris. Chris, long time no speak. Sorry, do I know you? Oh, Chris, don't be daft. It's me, David. Cash your card, David. <laughs> no, I don't think you understand it. It's me, David. Tenant. Oh, sorry, David. Didn't notice you. Just like you didn't notice me earlier when I went to say hi. Sorry, I was busy. You know, you know what it's like. You didn't answer me question. What question? Cash your card, David. Uh, I, I'm not paying. I, I'm just saying hi. Yeah, well, if you're not paying, do you mind stepping out of the line? People are queuing up to see me, so I'm a bit busy, all right? Uh, oh, so that's how it's going to be. <sighs> I'm not being a child here. You are. You ignored me first. I didn't know you were there. Oh, well, that says all, doesn't it? Mister, I've done Sutrinians too. Did it notice, notice me from up in his cloud? You're the dick who sat in his own booth. Look, I'm making these fans day, aren't I? Next. Hello. Uh, yeah, could you open that to Ryan, please? Cash your card, Ryan. That's 95 quid, mate. 95? Listen, kid, I'll, I'll do it for 80. Oh, yes, please. Hang on a minute. Don't go licking my punches up. I mean, lovely fans. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to Ryan, fans for picking the better doctor, David Alon Z. How's that? Hey, you would have been doctor if it weren't for me, all right? Well, <laughs> oh, well, maybe you should have stuck around. I'm sure the hierarchy would have loved you. That does it. You want some? Do you want some, eh? Oh, I'm so scared, Mr. G.I. Joe. <laughs> Let's see how you look after I rip out your lovely hair out. Well, at least I have hair to pull. What the hell is all this? How dare you? There I am signing autographs and I want to hear you two arguing. How dare you? All, all the, in front of all these people, all these fans who have come all this way to see you. And this is how you behave. Oh, absolutely disgraceful. No, behave like the doctors they think you are and apologize. I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm sorry too, mate. That's good. Now, all of you are pure. I can do you an autograph for 50 quid. <laughs> 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 Question. Is anyone here still subscribed to Doctor Who magazine? <laughs> well, I, I still am. And um, there's a letter here, as um, I'm sure Doctor Who magazine gets a lot of these letters from disgruntled fans. So I thought I'd read one to you now. Dear Doctor Who magazine, it's me again. I have been a long running subscriber of your publication since I was in my teens back in 1988. Frankly, I am utterly furious. No, no, that's too much. Boiling with rage that your time team does not include anyone over the age of 28, by which I mean me. And I think you'll find my opinions of value, given my rather extensive knowledge of the show, 
and I'd even consider Talon's of Wen Chiang just good old-fashioned fun. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not the first time I've had my opinions ignored. Oh, no. I tried to give Russell T. Davis some advice in 2003, telling him that without referring to the <clears throat> virgin new adventures and without the show uh, being 25 minutes for three to four weeks, the show will crash and burn. The Celestial Torium no longer responds to me, not sure why, although I personally thought my reason why the Doctor should always be a man was a perfectly valid excuse. And no, it's not because I'm a sexist. I don't have anything against Jodie Whittaker. I just don't think she should have been a woman. <laughs> but I digress. I think that my opinions are worth hearing more than a 20-something that probably thinks that the Doctor, a saviour of the weak, defender of human rights and the secret of fairness, is some kind of social justice warrior. It's political critics gone mad. Please note that I am, as I've said in my previous 20 letters, still on the edge of cancelling my subscription, <laughs> unless my request is adhered to. Anyway, I must take, please take my letter seriously as I am writing it. I must now return to badgering the time ladies to tell them why I'm wrong, remind Twitter my opinions haven't changed, and continue my life as a dick. <laughs> <laughs> Yours sincerely, Mr. Levi Mr. Anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> As a, as a P.S. P.S. Could you give more of a variety in the YouTube column, please? The we sound familiar lots are pretty good, and we already know who Dr. Puppet is. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Now, a message from the President of the United States. Oh, yes. <laughs> My loyal Master Race, it's your president speaking. Thank you for your cheers. Hey. Okay, that's enough. We have a grave situation, a very grave situation, that requires our attention. More important than public health care, more than North Korea, or whatever the hell Britain are doing with their fishermen. I'm talking about aliens. Not just Mexicans or Arabs, but from outer space. Space Mexicans and space Arabs. I mean, space is so big, it's full of aliens. I've seen them on TV, and it's just so dangerous in space. It's too dangerous. So, to counter this, I'm unveiling our new Space Force. So, let me introduce you to the team. This is a doctor. It's the doctor, and there's 13 or so of us to pick from. Well, I tried the woman one, but she didn't call me back. <laughs> and Donald, you know I'm an alien too, right? That's why I'm barely paying you. And here is our Admiral. Look, when I said I'd sign up to make the card an Admiral, I thought this was CBS, not a bloody imaginary space team. Besides, I'm a, an actor. I've seen you fight those Cybermen. Bored! They're bloody bored! <laughs> Whatever, they're all the same. That's not racism. <laughs> I've got a bad feeling about this. Uh, yeah, you bad pal. Please keep Lieutenant Chewbacca under control, Captain Solo. Master. Finally, someone with respect. I regret to say, Master, I have left a mess on the TARDIS doormat. Oh, you little... That's nothing. I had to clear up wolf shit from the flight deck numerous times. I thought you said you were actors. I'm talking about the actor. <laughs> Method by ass. Anyway, back to me. We also have on our team an actual star man. Listen, Donald, I've never really been a star man. I don't need to sing the songs. I'm not really major town. But I thought you knew all about life on Mars. To be fair, the title is misleading. <laughs> Back to business. This is a great team. It's going to be really, really great. Especially with our top of the range AI computer to guide us. I am a real person, you insensitive son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> And so, to any aliens out there watching this on their fake news, you should not mess with us, because we are so, so great. Do I have any questions? Not you, you're fake news. <laughs> Space Force, over and out.
We have been here with Sansomiria. We sound familiar. We are Thank you. Thank you.